Hi, welcome to the Art Ed Now 2019. My name is Amanda O'Shaughnessy and I am a kindergarten through fifth grade art teacher in the Kansas City area. Today, I'd like to show you how to turn a free draw project into a finished product that can be used for a fundraiser such as Art to Remember. We'll go over the ideation, the process, and a couple colored pencil techniques that you can use for any project. So there's a lot to cover, let's get started. If a kid is having trouble coming up with an idea, one of the options I like to give them is a mix and match animal. They can draw two to five animals from my little Ben and then combine them into one animal. So let's say they draw a tarantula, an elephant, and a deer, they'd have to come up with some sort of creative way to make that all one animal, whether it's through color, the parts of these animals' bodies, or through texture. For me, I really like to draw rainbows, so that's the thing that I'm going to go through today. The first thing you want to do is start out with the piece of paper that Art to Remember provides for you. The great thing about Art to Remember is that they do it all. They provide the paper, you send them their class list, they print out little labels, they put it on, and it comes back all organized by student name and class. So on the piece of paper, I always like to start out with pencil because it's erasable. So with whatever they are drawing, just start them out with pencil and eraser. Low pressure, no big deal. So once the drawing is complete to the student's liking and they are happy with their product, they can go ahead and switch from the pencil to the Sharpie or the permanent marker, whatever you have on hand. And this part is very simple. They just go over their lines with the marker. This is creating a coloring book-like um, quality to the, to the drawing that is going to be then filled in with the jolly colored pencil sticks. So in a sense, they're creating their own coloring page. So when they're finished with the Sharpie portion, they can have the choice of keeping their excess pencil lines or leaving them. We're gonna be coloring these, so some of those lines will just be covered up with the color anyway. When coloring, uh, I really like using these Jolly Super Sticks. They are durable, break resistant, and um, very vibrant in their colors. So one thing that makes them so sustainable for use in the elementary classroom is that the color is glued all the way down the pine wood stick um, in the core. So this tippity tapping that we hear so often in the art room is not gonna break the interior of the, of, of the pencil. Also, when you go to sharpen the colored pencils, the colored part is not gonna fall out. That can be a problem when sharpening colored pencils often, and that's not gonna happen to you with these jolly colored pencil sticks. So, some of the techniques that I'd like to show you today are stippling, hatching, and using pressure to create variety in your line quality. So I'm gonna start out with just a light pressure throughout. And um, the reason I like to start out with light pressure throughout is, well, my hand doesn't get as tired. It kind of lays the groundwork for anything else that I'm going to do in the artwork. So at this point, I could call my drawing finished. Uh, for many of us, this is all that we're going to expect from our students, and that, that's great. To take your project further, let's add some variety with pressure and hatching and scumbling. We'll start with pressure first. So when, when you're coloring, um, the gradient of pushing really hard to then transitioning into a lighter, lighter area really shows um, in the depth of the color. What I like about Jolly colored pencils is that they are very um, soft in application. So those transitions can happen pretty easily. I am going to apply darker pressure on this middle rainbow as a point of emphasis. 
and on the smaller rainbows, I am just going to put a little bit towards the edges to give it a touch of dimensionality. So using colored pencils in this way could be a great way for you to spice up your gradient projects for value when you do those lessons with your classes. Okay, so now that I'm finished with the pressure, I'm going to go into scumbling. So scumbling is essentially drawing tiny little circles um, to create a little bit of visual interest. So I'm going to put that in the clouds. This part is really fun for kids because it is a little looser in its quality and it can go fairly quickly or you can spend as much time on it as they would like. So colored pencils can be tedious work. To help complement and offset how tedious they are, we can utilize hatching to create um, a little bit of texture and a trick for blending without actually blending. So I'm going to go back over the background with some hatching, which is just going to be straight lines going the exact same direction. If you would like, you could do cross hatching, which goes one direction and then the other direction. And I'm going to take whatever color I'm using and I'm going to inch it a little bit into the neighboring color. Once you're finished with your artworks, you just send them into Art to Remember and they do the rest. Art to Remember makes projects successful, easy, and fun. Using this lesson will help um, individualize students projects and put that personal touch to each artwork. Thanks for joining me today and enjoy the rest of the conference.